exists in spring not present on the year at any other period. When March is scarcely here, a color stands abroad on solitary fields that science cannot overtake, but human nature feels. It waits upon the lawn. It shows the furthest tree upon the furthest slope you know. It almost speaks to you. Then as horizon's step or noon's report away without the formula of sound, it passes and we stay. A quality of loss affecting our content as trade had suddenly encroached upon a sacrament. Welcome back to Poetry in Music. I love me some Emily Dickinson, so you can look forward to hearing her poetry often in the Wait, future. didn't you wear that same shirt during our last Red show? Red is my signature color. Why do you always wear black? I am a poet. When poets recite for an audience, we wear a beret. Duh. Whenever poets perform in public, we wear all black. It's kind of our thing. Red is warm. Red is fire. Red is passion. Red is, well, here's a little something from Robert Burns. Maybe you've heard of him. Oh, my love's like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love's like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. When you're dressed in black, you're cool. You're powerful. You stand out above the crowd. Think Johnny Cash, Ozzy Osbourne, Steve Jobs, ninjas, Darth Vader. Think Batman. When I'm dressed in all black, I'm like the four members of the 70s rock band Kiss rolled up into one charismatic package. To use a rock band analogy, I'm the lead singer dressed in black in the spotlight. And you, music guy, why, you're the keyboard player. And fans are not clamoring to get backstage after the show to see the keyboard player. Your words are hurtful, poetry boy. Just because something is true, that doesn't mean that you have to say it. You disappoint me, poetry boy. I expect better from you. Speaking of better, there is nobody who is a better writer than Emily Dickinson. The Saddest Noise, The Sweetest Noise by Emily Dickinson. The saddest noise, the sweetest noise, the maddest noise that grows. The birds, they make it in the spring at night's delicious close. Between the March and April line, that magical frontier beyond which summer hesitates, almost too heavenly near, it makes us think of all the dead that sauntered with us here by separation's sorcery made cruelly more dear. It makes us think of what we had and what we now deplore. We almost wish those siren throats would go and sing no more. An ear can break a human heart as quickly as a spear. We wish the ear had not a heart so dangerously near. Ms. Dickinson certainly does write perceptively and frequently about death. You may be watching this video from your social isolation hologram chamber sometime in the 22nd century, but in the here and now on April 3rd, 2020, even though it's early spring, there's way too much uncertainty, sadness, and death happening in our world. Poetry Boy, let's close out this show with something life-affirming and joyful from my Emily. To make a prairie by Emily Dickinson. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee. One clover and a bee. And reverie. The reverie alone will do if bees are few. Thank you for spending time with us today. On our next show, 
we'll be enjoying William Blake's poetry and music. See you on Sunday.